Kerry Sean with you here on BBC Radio Wales and my very special guest this afternoon is the frontman of one of the greatest bands in Wales and the world. As part of the Manic Street Preachers, he sold over 10 million albums worldwide. But James Dean Bradfield's next release isn't a Manix record. It's his second solo album and something he's kept us waiting for for 14 years. The album is called Even in Exile. It's out on August the 14th and I'm delighted to say that James Dean Bradfield is with us now. Good afternoon to you, dear sir. How are you doing? I am as well as to be expected. (laughs) The same as the rest of us, I think. Yeah, I know. We're all in this together. We and are. You know what? The last time we spoke, you just released the soundtrack for a submarine drama called The Chandra, yes. which <laughs> yeah. is a good uh, metaphor for life in lockdown. Um, so how has it been for you being in lockdown? I think uh, I don't think I've got anything uh, special or interesting or different to add, really. Um, I've been, you know, been through the whole gamut of emotions just like everybody else where uh, you think, right, I'm going to get fit. And then you think, <laughs> right, I'm going to learn an instrument. And you think, right, I'm going to make the perfect pizza. And then you think, right, what am I going to do next? And then you think, right, what am I going to do? <laughs> you know, it's just like, um, so oh. kind of, I've just, yeah, I'm just doing, uh, for my, for my boy, he's obsessed with me trying to do a Batman voice for him every day. Um, so that's exercising my, um, my kind of my lower notes in my singing voice, um, so I, I might end up sounding like Barry White at the end of this all. I think. Come on, let's, let's hear, let's hear your Batman voice. Come on. No, I'm not doing my Batman voice. No way. Um, no, <laughs> you reckon? Oh, and I just brought out a new record. I shouldn't have done it in that voice. <laughs> It, yeah. Well, let's talk about it then, because this album is not the work of a musician in lockdown because you finished writing it at the end of last year. It's called Even in Exile, and it's been inspired by a Chilean artist, folk singer, activist called Victor Java. Tell us about him. He was somebody that came from very humble beginnings. He, he came from a plantation background um, in Chile. You know, he, he was kind of destined to work on the plantation, just like some of his relations and parents had and then they moved to Santiago and he, he was brought up by his mother. Uh, he kind of taught himself how to play guitar by using his mother's guitar. His mother had, his mother had, had been able to play guitar and sing and he learned on his mother's guitar and his mother you know, did such an amazing job in bringing him up and he became very politically active and, um, and he became inspired by a woman called uh, Violetta Parra. She was a famous folk singer in Chile and between all these women that inspired him, between his mother, between Violetta Parra, he became this self-made person that wrote songs, directed plays, and became active in 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 getting a, a government, a very progressive government, voted, elected in Chile, and just became famous for his songs, for his activism, and for just trying to bring people together. <clears throat> he wasn't one of those protest singers that tried to make people fight against each other. He really tried to bring people together. But unfortunately, his, his story ended in him losing his life um, when uh, the, the, the government was overthrown by a, by a right-wing junta in Chile and he was murdered, unfortunately. So um, it doesn't have a happy ending, but his influence, his power, his kind of message of hope, his way of bringing people together has, has endured um, over the decades. And, and that's why the, the album is called Even in Exile. So, as you said, you know, he died giving a voice to the poor, uh, to those seeking justice. Did his family get justice after his brutal killing at the age of 40? There has been retrospective charges brought against people and um, and people have been actively blamed and charged. And he has been also uh, reburied um, to 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 a more dignified resting place. So post 1973, which is the time which was when he was murdered, things have happened that have redressed the balance and kind of brought just justice to, 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 to the history book, so to speak. And when you were recording this album, his songs were still being sung at protests in Italy, weren't they? So his voice, his um, message, his music still goes on and lives on. It does, yeah. I mean, in Chile, also, there's been uh, <clears throat> particular unrest against the, uh, you know, the, the government in Chile in the last year and a half or so. 
And his songs have been sung by like 5,000 people en masse in places like mm -hmm. Plaza Italia in Santiago, you know. And so it's amazing that his influence has endured and his, his influence is still one of reconciliation and inclusivity. He is, yeah. His voice always tends to bring people together. And like I said, you know, when you listen to other protest songs, of course, sometimes they, these songs need to have aggression and confrontation in the, in the music, you know. But his kind of protest singing was always quite feminine and was, and was always intrinsically beautiful. And I was always struck that his voice was one that he was prepared to give to anybody that was that was prepared to be inclusive and that was prepared to try and fight for a better society. He didn't really try and exclude people from his message. Um, like that kind of struck home for me really in this day and age where I think we're really failing to live under one tent where, where, where people even on the same side can yeah. seem to pick a fight with each other every other day. Yeah. I kind of liked his message really, I think. Well, shall we hear a track from the album, James? Um, um, we are going to play now The Boy From The Plantation that you just mentioned there. Uh, this is from James Dean Bradfield's brand new album. And have a listen to this. Ah, oh, utterly brilliant. It's stunning. The Boy From The Plantation, one of the tracks from James Dean Bradfield's brand new solo album called Even In Exile, which is out next month. Oh, it's so, it's such, I, 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 I love the, um, the chorus. I, 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 I just absolutely love that track. Huge congratulations. And, you know, you were talking about the fact that he's not confrontational, uh, Victor Java, in his music. Uh, he is the boy from the plantation that you're singing about. And I was just wondering, you know, you don't shy away from politics in your music, but you do have freedom of speech. You are free to confront, to express your opinion without feeling threatened. But if you were threatened, James Dean Bradfield, do you think you would be as brave as Victor Java? No, I don't think so at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> really? I really don't Even know. from a boy from Blackwood? No, Pomp from Fright, if you don't mind. Oh, sorry, a, mile is a, a mile is a long way in the valleys. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but kind of, no, I think he lived in such an extreme uh, political landscape. And South America in, in the 60s, 70s, late 50s, even going into the 80s, was a place where left and right was so far apart from each other. Um, yeah. And it feels like things are very much polarised in Western politics these days as well. But he lived in a time where the repercussions of being against something um, was very much more grave. Well, um, I've heard a couple more tracks from the album, They'll Come the War, and you paint that picture with a building intro to that track and Seeking the Room with Three Windows as well. They're both very film-like. You are now an architect of music, not a songwriter, James Dean Bradfield. Uh, perhaps I'm an architect of, of nice little bungalows. <laughs> I think there's a lot upstairs. There's a lot, lot more to get. How do you feel writing music these days? It's strange because, you know, myself and uh, Nick and Sean, you know, Manchu Preachers, we have started writing for the next record and we've got a few demos floating around. But it's, it's hard to place your music in this day and age. Thank God this record, this, this solo album was finished before coronavirus because it's, it's very hard to not think that everything is being coloured or informed or everything is becoming so much more profound since we've been living in lockdown. And so it's a bit harder to write songs, in, in, you know, in this time because yeah. I th we don't really want to bring anybody down. And we do have that ability in the Manics to actually sometimes <laughs> bring people down with our music. Now and again, just sometimes. Um, and I don't want to... I think people have been through enough lately, you know. So yeah. uh, it's... it's now we're writing songs for another Mannix record. You know, it's it's kind of we're still finding our way because everything feels a little too profound at the moment. I think. Yeah, and how are the other two doing, uh, Sean and Nikki? Then you know, how are they coping with lockdown? I think it's safe to say, kind of, kind of the same as me. Uh, yeah. Sean's Sean's got a new dog, um, so he's uh, <laughs> he's been he's been he's been preoccupied with that. So that's, that's busy. New dog in the kitchen, that's busy, you know. That's busy with life. Um, me and Nick are just, uh, just offloading each other on the phone, 
every yeah. other day or every day. Um, just going, <laughs> what about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? Oh, it's great that you got somebody to lean on in that way. So your wife isn't getting it. Uh, uh, in oh. lockdown, Robbie Williams has been singing karaoke on Facebook Live and he sang uh, one of yours, Motorcycle Emptiness, um, one of his favourites apparently, although he didn't know the words. <laughs> um, did you see it? I saw a little bit of it um, over my wife's shoulder. I'm not very good. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not very good at uh, kind of like uh, going to the internet and looking at things really. Um, right. I'm, more, I'm, I'm more old-fashioned. I'm still looking at CFAX, you know, or trying to find CFAX if it exists, exists somewhere. Um, <laughs> you know, I used to love it when you could look up the cinema listings on CFAX. I used to love that. Oh. Um, Have you ever booked a holiday through CFAX? No. Couldn't you no. do that? Or teletext or something it was. Teletext. I remember looking at deals for holidays yeah. on that. You know, the music, the album reviews on teletext used to be brilliant. We used to get really good reviews on teletext. <laughs> Right. What about the kids? How are they doing? How are they doing? How are you? You know, you are a very, very intelligent man. I <laughs> bet you would be quite an intense teacher, James. Oh, no, I've been like the I've been like the headmaster wandering around the corridors, you know, just making sure, <laughs> <laughs> making sure that people are not leaning back in their chairs and stuff. Well, <laughs> my wife has been at the cold front of the nuts and bolts of teaching. Um, I mean, just like, uh, just walking around, just get your feet off the table, uh, kind of don't wear white socks to school tomorrow, stuff like that, you know. <laughs> You're contributing. And I'm, listen, uh, obviously, we've all been marvelling at the work of the NHS over the last four months. And um, we've all been clapping, of course, before the Thursday claps came to an end. But you're going one step further by putting on not one, but two special concerts for the NHS in December. What can you tell us about this? Well, number one, hopefully those gigs will happen. Obviously, yeah. They take it sold out straight away because, well... Um, the one night was free. <laughs> <laughs> so, sold out in an hour. I'm not surprised. Um, and then, and then the next night sold out really just like you know, just, just as quick as well. And, and so, the one night, the first night is for NHS workers or employees. Um, and then the second night, all the money from that gig goes to the NHS um, or a certain fund in the NHS. Um, hopefully, those dates in December will come off. But of course, we live in a time where things just change every week, don't we? Yeah. Um, so, it, you know, I'm sure that promoters have got other dates. But if and when they happen, and hopefully they will happen in December, it will just be a brilliant night to have no pressure put on the music or the audience except for just going for it and just getting drunk. That would be amazing. That's all we want. And we want them to do it for free as well. Um, yeah. And then the next night, exactly the same. No pressure on the music. Uh, no, fr no profound statements. Um, we just want to go for it. You know, blood, sweat and alcohol, basically. <laughs> oh, that's a great title for your next album. James <laughs> Dean Bradfield, it's been lovely chatting to you. Uh, you stay safe, OK? And um, all the very best for this brilliant new album, Even in Exile. It's out on LP, CD and digital on the 14th of August. A big virtual kutch to you. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much and a big touch to you too <laughs>